Hi, I'm John Kolar, Chief Naturalist for the Geauga Park District. I am out here at the West Woods today exploring, and you know, I have to say, we are so fortunate to have such a great diversity of wildlife in our parks, and in Northeastern Ohio in general. By diversity, I mean different kinds of animals that you can find. We have such an abundance, it's really great. Now, when people come out to the parks, wanting to see wildlife, sometimes they get frustrated because they don't see too many different kinds of animals. What do you think are some reasons why people don't see so many animals when they come out to the parks? If you guessed time of day, that's one of them. Time of day, yeah, most animals are nocturnal or active at nighttime. So when we are out during the daytime looking for them, they are sleeping. And when we are sleeping, they are active. Another reason would be time of year. Um, in the winter time, a lot of animals, not a lot, but several different species will hibernate. So they will be deep sleeping while we are out looking for them. Some animals also go away for the winter. What's that word for when the animal moves away? Migration, yep. Some animals like birds and insects migrate. Another big reason why people don't see animals out in the parks is because, well, my friends, let me tell you a little secret. We are the scariest thing in the woods. Yes, animals are afraid of us. So when they hear us walking down the trail or smell us or see us from a long distance a uh, ways away, they go and hide, they camouflage, they blend in. So we can walk right by animals and not even know that they're there. So if you can't actually see the animals themselves, what kind of clues does a wildlife detective like myself look for that will reveal the animal's presence to me? What kind of things do they leave behind that might tell me that they are there? If you guessed tracks like footprints, that's one thing. How about uh, bedding areas, maybe where they laid down the night before? Um, Maybe a nest where they, where they raise their young? What about feathers? Or, ooh, I hear sounds all around me. What about just sounds that an animal might make? These are all things, oh, scat. How about scat, the scientific word for animal droppings? These are all clues that a wildlife detective like myself looks for. Well, my friends, I think it's time to hit the trail. Let's go on a wildlife detective training hike. We'll look for clues or signs left behind by various animals in the West Woods. And if I find one of those clues or signs, uh, I'll have you try to guess what animal left behind that clue. Sound good? All right, now at the base of this shagbark hickory tree, I see a whole bunch of nuts on the ground. And if you look closely, these nuts have been chewed apart by something. I mean, they've really been chewed apart. Do you have a guess as to what animal left behind these chewed up nuts? Here's a couple clues for you. They are a mammal. They have hair covering their entire body. They are diurnal or active during the daytime. And they also make their nests out of leaves. Way up at the tops of trees, you'll see these nests called drays. Do you have a guess? If you guessed squirrel, you are correct. Probably more specifically, a fox squirrel. Good job, everybody. So what in the world is this? A couple clues, wildlife detectives. Uh, the animal that made this thing is covered with feathers. It likes to fly and it is also warm blooded, which means its body temperature stays the same whether it's warm or cold outside. Consistent body temperature. This is also where they raise their young. It's called a nest. So what animals make nests? You got it. This is a bird's nest. More specifically, this is a red-eyed vireo's nest. It's an old one left over from last year. The cool thing is sometimes in the winter, other animals like mice might reuse this nest for a winter shelter. 
pretty cool. Red-eyed vireo nest. Now muddy areas along the trail are a good place to look for tracks. And if I look at this right here, I see it almost looks like my hand, but much smaller. Wow. Anybody know what animal has very human-like footprints, five toes? Uh, they are nocturnal, active at night. They are a mammal. Um, they are omnivores, which means they eat a variety of plants and animals. Sometimes they have a reputation for getting into your garbage. Who left behind these tracks? If you guessed raccoon, you are correct. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Okay, wildlife detectives, who made the holes on the side of this black cherry tree? A couple clues for you. This animal makes holes on the side of trees to get to the juicy insects inside the tree. And look at how big these holes are. It also makes holes on the side of trees as a place where they can nest, where they can raise their young. So what animal makes holes on the sides of trees like this? It flies, they have feathers. If you guessed woodpecker, you are correct. More specifically, I'd say these holes were made by a pileated woodpecker. Some people say pileated, either way is just fine by me, but they are a really cool bird. So whose tracks do we have right here? Let's take a look. If you look closely, you can see, I put my fingers in there so you can see for size. This is a pretty big animal. It has two toes. It is a mammal. It's actually Ohio's second largest mammal, second only to the black bear. But black bears have five toes. This animal has two toes. It has antlers that the males have that grow on the top of their heads that they drop off every year. Any clues? If you guessed white-tailed deer, you are correct. I'm here below the deck of the Sunset Overlook and I found this nest here. It's abandoned. It's not this year's nest. Um, but this was made by a type of an insect, has six legs, it flies, and this is where they raise their young. Do you have a guess as to what animal makes a nest like this? If you guessed paper wasp, you are correct. Good job. Make sure you always stay away from active wasp nests. All right, wildlife detectives, we have some scat. Scat is the scientific word for animal droppings. So this scat was left behind by a type of a bird that spends most of its time on the ground, can fly, will roost up in trees. It's a pretty big bird, and it sounds like this. <laughs> pretty good, huh? Do you have a guess? If you guessed wild turkey, you are correct. Good job. Now, sometimes to be a good wildlife detective, you have to use your ears. So what animal is making that loud peeping sound that I hear? It's not a bird. It's actually an amphibian. This amphibian is about the size of maybe about a quarter. It's cold-blooded, which means its body temperature adjusts to its environment. 
And that is a male, actually those are males making that sound to attract a mate. Anybody have a guess? If you guessed spring peeper, which is a type of a tree frog, you are correct. Good job. Ah, well, my friends, it looks like we've come to the end of the wildlife detective trail for today. Hey, I hope you've learned a few things today, and I also hope you're inspired to get out and see what kind of clues that you can find along the trails out in the parks. We'll see you next time.